And tonight, we're talking about Carnival of Souls from 1962, directed by Herc Harvey. And our synopsis from Letterboxd, and it's, uh, it's uh, one-liner. <laughs> she escaped death. Now it wants her back. Thanks. Uh, Mary Henry ends up the sole survivor of a fatal car accident through mysterious circumstances. Trying to put the incident behind her, she moves to Utah and takes a job as a church organist, but her fresh start is interrupted by visions of a fiendish man. As visions begin to occur more frequently, Mary finds herself drawn to the deserted carnival on the outskirts of town. The strangely alluring carnival may hold the secret to her tragic past. So, Carnival of Souls mm-hmm. is like probably one of the earliest Criterion movies I bought for myself. <gasps> uh, Whoa! It had a wicked old cover. It was like the painted, mm-hmm. grimy old thing. Uh, it was a horror movie in the the classy Criterion collection, and I was just like, "Ooh, I gotta get that!" Like it's a horror mm-hmm. movie and Criterion. It's like so that drew me in immediately. It has a kind of a strange title. Um. And it was expensive because it was a double disker at the time. And oh. uh, so, you know, it was a period of time when one's consumption of things, when you have like, uh, like you're no money out of high school, you're, you're going to university, you're kind of broke and you want to get stuff. You, you can only, mm-hmm. you, you can only get so much. And mm-hmm. so this was one of those things that I went and splurged on. And uh, it's one of those things I've never really regretted buying because this movie I like a lot. Um, uh, watching it now, uh, there's definitely things in it that I didn't notice as much because I, I actually now have the Blu-ray of it, which I watched for the first time for, uh, this mm-hmm. week's cast. <gasps> and, uh, cool. one of the things that immediately hopped out at me was the, the hilariously bad ADR, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is like, just so out of whack. It's like, like it was always like that, even on the older DVD and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. in like crystal clear Blu-ray and uh, 2k and whatever clear, uh, lossless audio. It's like really like, what the fuck? <laughs> like that, that this is inexcusable. Um, so yeah. any, anyway, uh, the movie's got mm-hmm. this like great kind of like Roger Corman fifties B movie, like drive in sort of start where it's just like a couple of loose ladies are hanging out on the town <laughs> in a roadster and a couple of boys pull up. It's like American graffiti style. And, uh, it's like, Oh, Hey, you want to race? And like, yeah, we do. <laughs> and things go, uh, haywire. And soon enough, those, those ladies are going off a bridge to their watery deaths. Um, well, and, who, who gave them a license anyways? That's right. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's their first mistake. Uh, uh-huh. so anyway, then we get the nice spooky opening credits, which are mm-hmm. fantastic. Uh, they're fairly, we'll, we'll get into the photography anyway. So this movie has always had a special place for me. Uh, mm-hmm. I, it's not without its faults. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, there's like some very non-professional actor performances by many of the actors yeah. because none of them are <clears throat> professional actors at all, except for uh, Mary Heron, uh, the actress mm-hmm. playing her. She is the only one at, that actually had some like acting under her belt. Everyone else is just like people they had on hand in Salt Lake city, Utah, making their movie. Uh, and they just went, worked with it, which kind of, I don't know. It doesn't detract too, too much for me. Uh, but yeah, this movie looks great. It has this, uh, what do you call it? It's like this clean professional cinematography that mm-hmm. I like really like. Like it looks great because it's just like using the, the period and that period of time also having to manufacture really great looking clothing and just general design and buildings and spaces. Everything's just like so much more evocative of that. It, it just, it looks like the time because it's like this amateurish production. Um, mm-hmm. It could only use like actual locations and stuff like that. So everything looks genuine. Uh, and when you're com- compel- or combining that with the strangeness of the story, this like kind of like odd kind of like ghost story slash kind of like internal psychological drama, uh, it, it gives the movie this weird air to it. So mm-hmm. that's kind of my initial piece here on Carnival of Souls. Uh, RJ. Yo, tell me your history of Carnival Souls and how you how does it make you feel? Well, there's this carnival in Creepsville called Whoop Up Days, <laughs> uh-huh. 
And uh, the midway is always covered in piss from uh, some of the lesser reputable people of our town. Um, I'm talking about, you know, the people who piss on the midway in front of everyone. <laughs> I've so ne- when I, I've never experienced this. You've never seen that? You know, when you go for an elephant ear yep. and then you walk the midway, you're like, I haven't been here since I was a kid. And it just reeks like piss everywhere from the carnies and no. the, the drunks, the, <laughs> no. the local drunks. No, it doesn't. <laughs> well, anyways, I bring it up because when I heard of this carnival of souls, all I could think of was, I hope it's better than that carnival of piss we have in our hometown. And uh, <laughs> you know what? Carnival of piss. Carnival of piss. Um, <laughs> you know what, Jer? It was better. Oh, well, that's good. It'd be, it is a better. What a bar. <laughs> I, it actually it reminds me of a uh, Wayne's World too when they go to Piccadilly Circus, and it's like what a shitty circus. Mm-hmm. It's like that. Mm-hmm. I got all the hot puns and carnival circus yeah. jokes. Got to get you, them out. You want some more, baby? No, I'll save some more. Yeah. Um, no. So I this was a rewatch for me too, mm-hmm. which is rare. Yeah. Because I don't usually I don't have a ton of rewatches in here unless it's like RoboCop. Yeah. But um. I watched this, I think, two Creeptobers ago when uh, I think when I first started using the Letterboxd Mm -hmm. in like 2015 or so. So I think it was uh, a JFD suggestion from you. Um, Well, Letterboxd was for sure. And then I believe, as we've talked in the ghoul schools, when we started uh, talking more frequently was when uh, it was around the Halloween season and you were not the biggest fan of my picks for my Halloween movies and you well, started yeah. giving me better things to watch. Exactly. Which, t- to be fair, you're still not a fan of some of the stuff I watch, but I don't care because I'm still going to watch those alien movies, baby, because I like them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, yeah, I think you I, you had never lent this to me. I think maybe I had heard you talk about it or something. Yeah, I don't, yeah, so, I, uh, I don't recall ever uh, lending it out. Yeah, really you, you didn't... Yeah, you didn't lend it to me or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I just I think I remember you brought it up once or something. So I watched it uh, and I liked it then, and I watched it now and kind of knowing, I mean, it's not like in the plot, it's not like a super mystery or anything like that, like kind right. of how it's gonna turn out. But I think, like when I first watched it, I wasn't totally expecting it, and then when I did figure it out, I was like, okay. But this time, going into it from the start, knowing mm-hmm. how it ends, yeah, uh, I really en- I, I enjoyed it even more. I think because mm-hmm. the way they set certain things up, I was yep. like, nice. I was like, this is this is all very good things. Yeah. <laughs> from from the moment you see her walk out of the water in like yep. one of the nicest shots. In oh, any- hey. So. Before, as we get into that, so yeah. uh, did anything pop to mind watching it this time around? <laughs> yeah, um, shit, there was so much stuff. Uh, there was like two two big ones. Okay. You so, just go because yeah, it'll so take my, me. So forever. my two big things, and I was gonna, I, I, yeah. I didn't post these on Instagram yet, but like one of the common things I guess tossed about with Carnival of Souls is people allude to this movie being an influence on David Lynch, and no one ever really yep. s- explains that. No one ever like says, "Oh, David Lynch absolutely said that at some point." No one, he's never said that as far as I could tell. But there's a couple things here. Number one, when uh, Mary Henry uh, yep. gets out of that water. And she's at that bridge. It is very uh, much like uh, Rona Polanski Mm -hmm. uh, in Twin Peaks. When she's walking across that bridge in the pilot of Twin Peaks, she's like covered in mud and just like sort of walking around like a zombie. Like she's half dead. Mm -hmm. And like that's very kind of similar. And also the one that I – it hit me immediately is like her name's Mary Henry, which are the names of Henry in Eraserhead and his girlfriend, Mary Ah, yeah, cool. Mary, Mary. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't pick up on that one. Yeah, like as soon as I heard Mary Henry, I went, "Wait, Mary?" And I was like, "Henry?" I'm like, "Oh fuck," because mm-hmm. I think that it's like she's like Mary X in Henry, like whatever. Yeah, they, they, it's a you know, it's a it's a Lynch thing. Mm-hmm. I feel you, man. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't uh, like. I think I was her walking out of that. I think I was trying to connect that to some something Lynchian, like. Because he has that thing where he has ladies walking around distraught. But uh, there was something else I was thinking of, and it'll come to me later on. Okay. But, yeah, that's, like, the best shot ever. And, uh, no, that's cool. I didn't piece those together. But, anyways, back to my original yeah. thoughts. Uh, yeah, I really like this movie. Um, it's kind of like what you said. It's not – this movie – 
it's not going to win over any acting things, but it's not trying to, right? No. Like, it's not trying to be grade A acting, and I don't think it needs to be either because I think the people who are going to enjoy this movie are going to like the the elements of it for what they are more than any of the acting. And mm-hmm. like you and me, like, we watch a lot of shit that has bad acting, but that doesn't stop us from liking it. That's right. Um, yeah, so I I think the, the two things that... After I had watched it the first time, I think I looked on Letterboxd or something, and uh, they do stick out, so they're kind of like, they're almost cliched things to say now, but they do, but for a good reason, like, there's a lot, one of them is like atmosphere and like mood in this movie, because it does establish that really well, where it's, uh, um, it's kind of, like, there's a lot of scenes where the music dicks dictates how things are going and it's kind of in this somber that, oh, like that, pa- that back and forth organ sound yeah the back and forth organ organ sound and uh like the spooky music uh and then also it's like a twilight zone episode which i i'm pretty sure a lot of people say oh, but you yeah. know so uh, i i feel like that's your obligatory <laughs> like uh generic yeah. statement about it, it, this movie. It, yeah so one of the things i uh in preparation for this. So I read the, uh, the essay with the new Blu-ray, which is written by uh, Kirla Janice, who's like awesome. She's this great, uh, uh, I don't know how old she is now, probably in her forties, but she's like this, uh, female curator of film. She wrote this awesome book called house of psychotic women. She actually, uh, kind of, uh, was in the Vancouver film scene and did these like really great horror festivals and like just cult genre sort of stuff. So she's mm-hmm. like really good at writing and talking about stuff. Her essay is very good on this and she name drops, uh, the twilight zone, but not just the show in general, but a particular episode of the twilight zone called the hitchhiker, Ooh. which, it is very, very similar to Carnival of Souls, and it would have come out I bet. a year earlier, two years earlier. So who knows what uh, mm-hmm. Herc Harvey uh, would have thought about The Hitchhiker. He probably would have seen it. But uh, so the plot of The Hitchhiker is this woman, this blonde woman, is driving her car across America to uh, settle down in San Francisco from mm-hmm. like, Philadelphia, I think. And... Uh, this, this episode opens up with her like, oh, she or her car blew out on her, or her uh, tire blew out on her, and her car is getting fixed. And then she starts <laughs> seeing this hitchhiker like following her around, and he keeps thumbing her for a ride, saying it, eh? and she just ignores him. But then like she'll drive mm-hmm. like five, ten minutes up the road, and then she'll see him again. And then she'll see him again, and then she'll see him again, and then she'll stop at a gas station and be filling up, and she'll look over, and there he is. It nice. dumped for a ride. And it's just like this like thing of like what's going on and she's driving and then he just appears like when you don't expect him. And mm-hmm. I mean, uh, spoiler for this fucking <laughs> old ass TV show, uh, Hitchhiker, the, the, this man who doesn't really speak too much in the show, he is mm-hmm. death because <gasps> she did, she died. That tire, mm-hmm. she did not survive the tire explosion. And I mean, like it's pretty telegraphed now because we're, we're kind of, taught how to watch for those type of beats but the episode right. is like really like it's well shot black and white it's got a great simple story uh the it's all under it's mostly underplayed probably the worst part is it's got a voiceover narration to her like, mm-hmm. internal monologue which is always kind of like dodgy it's like if you took that out it would be like fine to do and people would probably like it even more <laughs> right so there's like definitely like there there is a reason why people go this is like twilight zone because there's like this really cool list i found on letterbox too uh mm-hmm. this week where it's like like twilight zone like movies <laughs> and it's oh. just like and it's like all like really good movies like that's the yeah. thing it's like twilight zone people throw that around and describe things like that all the time but in oh, the best yeah. in the best way possible i don't think anyone goes yeah but it's just like a twilight zone episode um, no yeah it's usually yeah. like it's i th- feel like especially when it's like good movies people say the one thing i hear all the time is people are like it's like a great twilight zone episode yeah. it's never like oh it's like a real bad twilight zone Right. Actually, maybe some people do say that. I don't know. No, no I don't. Talks, I don't know everybody. No one talks about bad Twilight Zone episodes, yeah. though. Uh, and so after I watched, uh, I rewatched the Hitchhiker uh, just to have it mm-hmm. in mind after wa- or when I watched uh, Carnival of Souls. Uh, then I started watching Twilight Zone again as well because <laughs> uh, I can't help myself. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. You are an animal. You know that? Uh, I'm insatiable. You know that, Chief? Yeah, on this on yep. this Twilight Zone-esque list I'm looking at, it's got Seconds and mm-hmm. Groundhog Day. 
the exterminating Ooh. angel, Planet of the Apes, obviously. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Truman Show, It's a Wonderful Life, Twelve Monkeys. Mm-hmm. It's like lots of good stuff. There's a lot. Yep. Of, there's a lot. Of, like it's a great thing to be like Twilight Zone. I think. Hey man, speculative sci-fi. That's right. It's the tits. Well, I mean the 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 TV show Black Mirror. It's like modern yeah, exactly. day Twilight Zone. People love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, I just threw that out there because it's an obligatory statement. It's, because it's if we didn't say it, someone would have emailed in, mm-hmm. even though no one emails in anymore. That's true. Um, but I feel like yeah, someone you could say that. But yeah, I love this movie. Like it's got a it's got a wicked good vibe. In a mood atmosphere like you will like uh, one of the best scenes i think is when she's tuning the car radio and it's just spooky music on every station yeah like i i find the idea of that so like uh not satisfying but mm. it comforts me so much where it's like yeah it's like that is spooky it would be on every station and then you you just get the backdrop with the black and white i actually wrote down black and white baby because uh, this movie looks great, especially mm-hmm. when it's uh, they show those skylines uh, out near the water and stuff like that, where you get that real good contrast between the light and the dark. Ooh, man, I dig it. Hey, RJ. I Yo. Just, so I just checked uh, the, the creeps email. Uh-oh. And we, we have an email. What? <laughs> Halfway through the review now. Yeah, well, maybe it's important. I don't know. Uh, it's yeah. from one Cameron by... Oh. Okay. Or do you know this person? Uh, I do know this person. <laughs> okay. Why? Well, uh, Cameron asks, this movie has an excellent plot, but I just had one question that didn't make sense. How much dumps could one butt dump <laughs> if a butt could dump out dumps? Thank you very much. Um, no, I don't know this person, but I feel like he raises a good, a good question. Mm-hmm. How much butts could the butt dump? That's what in, people, in this movie. That's what people turn in tune into for us to do. Yeah, it, I mean, if you want a scholarly <laughs> criterion review show, go visit some other jerk. We bring you hard facts. Facts. Of well, life. I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate the email. I think, uh, <laughs> like I was saying, we're not getting emails from anyone else, so I appreciate yeah. it. It's a nice. It's a nice question. I, I will think about it. Yeah, the the bar has definitely been. Um, something's happened to the bar. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, old, weird, judgmental Mormon lady with her container mm-hmm. of Ajax and uh, AKA the bath lady. Cause oh, boy, yeah. she goes on about baths and like, don't be afraid to have a bath, get it clean. Yeah. I feel like she was just setting it up so that that creepy dude could go watch her have a bath. Mr. Linden. Mm-hmm. He, he definitely... Which, by the way, what an <laughs> asshole, right? Man, so talk about like I. He gets straight onto the patron saint of uh, uh-huh. the podcast. He because he is a king creep. <laughs> like he is a. King I don't know. Creep. He's like I don't know if he's got much like competition. Like he might be running away with that prize uh, right this moment. Mm-hmm. I I have to go back and uh, inspect the creep list. Uh, but yeah, Mister Linden, uh, the fellow tenant at the. Uh, boarding house that um mary mm-hmm. henry's staying at boy that guy is like just like the fucking worst um yeah, that guy sucks man yeah it's like there's, there's a pretty good reason why you don't have a girlfriend there champ <laughs> plus he he gets like he gets so upset when he's like he's like why don't you have a beer with me and she's like because i don't want to and she and he's like well you didn't you don't want to do anything you're just sitting there and she's like well i never wanted to come out with you you made me and he's like ah this is what i get picking up the wrong dame when he like forced himself on her so many times. Oh. She's just like, she's like, no thanks. And he's like, you're going out with me doll, no matter yeah. what. So like, it's kind of weird though. Cause like, she's like letting, like leading him on right at times. A little, a but, little bit. But it's so weird. Like cause they're almost like playing the like weird, um, like Howard Hawks bringing up baby like thing or they're like, uh. she's like, they're trying to be sassy. And it's like, they just mm-hmm. can't, pull it off i think the guy playing mr linton is actually pretty good like he is like mm-hmm. if i had to think about like 1960s entitled dude who like doesn't get told no and just like just says shit it's like that guy mm-hmm. captures that to a t like he like ugh, man ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you're right that guy is a uh, super creep 
just like mm-hmm. you. Yeah, exactly. There's that scene with uh, when he's sitting on the couch with her, and his just like invasive fist is just in her personal space, and she seems like totally oblivious to it in this weird way. And I'm like, how? Mm-hmm. how would, like you just be like, uh, excuse me, excuse me, you can put that right there. But oh, his fist is just right there. It's, I don't know. It's it's too too uh, uncomfortable. It's, mm-hmm. it's like some of the it's probably the probably the creepiest stuff in this movie is more that guy than the uh, white faced ghouls. The ghouls, yeah, yeah the cool, some of the coolest ghouls and, you'll ever see. And speaking of these ghouls, so there's the man uh, who's played yeah. by director Herc Harvey. Um, he reminds me a lot of Robert Blake's character in Lost Highway. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. And and you could even say like the weird, like kind of like the weird movement of those ghouls. They're very similar to the like woodsman characters that we're seeing in Twin Peaks right now. Oh yeah, a little bit. Like when they come, like when uh, after a dark coop, um, yeah, is attacked, and then like they come to heal him. That whole shit. That is that is some real Carnival of Soul stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, so I'm I don't know. You. There's maybe something to this uh, influence that uh, David Lynch uh, might have uh, had coming from Carnival of Souls, mm-hmm. but who can know for sure? Not us. Not, not we don't. Not. We don't get paid enough for that. We yeah. don't get paid at all. Yeah, idle speculation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah, another thing is like I'm actually amazed that no one has made a movie about a person unstuck in reality, like wandering amongst a sea of people who don't notice someone talking to them or screaming, and they're just being chased by something. Have like, you Have you never seen Crocodile Dundee? <laughs> uh, I have, and RJ, you're lying. That's pretty. You're, you're well, lying. You're lying again. Okay. Sorry. I have seen that movie. It's not like Sister Act. It's not like Sister Act 2. <sighs> Back in the Habit? It's, 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 I, mean, I guess it's, it is like Ghost Dad, though. It is. Yeah, exactly. But, See? But, that, but that's like has an explanation because he's a ghost there and she's a ghost here. But I'm surprised they haven't mm-hmm. made like a movie where something else happens and you're not a ghost. Well, have you never seen Ghost Dad 2? Back in the Habit? N- nope. Okay, well, never mind that. That movie doesn't exist. <laughs> Well, why don't you make this movie for us? Maybe I will. Maybe mm. I won't. Mayhap. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so how about that Salt Terror? That, like, the Pavilion Carnival Complex. That's, oh, yeah. That's pretty rad. That it's, thing's dope. Yeah, and it's gone, burnt down. And they kept, like, mm-hmm. they built, they built like, three of those things on, on the old Salt Lake City Ocean Lake thing do. Ooh. These, yeah, those the, the are actual Salt Lake. <clears throat> yeah, those things are wicked cool, and I like them mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Uh, so Herc Harvey, this is his only feature film that he ever made. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. Did you read anything about him? Am I going to bore you about that guy? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I know anything about that guy. Okay. Well, there's no no like... wait, wait on me. Okay. So old uh, Herc Harvey, he was a he made like industrial educational films that was like sort of his bread and butter uh he worked for this outfit called like centron films uh Mm. or sorry the centron corporation um Mm -hmm. and then i guess like one day he was like hey i want to make a movie (laughs) uh and he was like uh he's shooting a centron film in california he developed the idea for carnival souls after driving past the abandoned saltaire pavilion um and then he hired uh candace hillegoss who plays mary harry or mary henry uh, she mm-hmm. was she was trained by Lee Strasberg. Hmm. Oh, Big Lee. I don't know any of the names you say, but I'm just gonna act like I did. Ob- Great. You, well, you see, obviously. Obviously. He, so he shot this movie for thirty three thousand uh, bucks. Mm-hmm. They shot in three weeks. His film crew consisted of five people, and they just mm-hmm. fucking nailed it out of the park. Just made a sh- huh. lean, mean little movie, and uh, the rest is history. I think that you're a lean, mean movie. Well, thank you. But uh, those educational spurts is why some people tune in. So spurts, spurts. So, you know, when sometimes when you get manic and you have those spurts of mm-hmm. educationalism. Yeah. How how does are... um as a man of science, how do those uh, psychoanalysis scenes work uh, <laughs> in real in reality? Are, are those... <laughs> I, I I liked more when the uh, psychologist came to the lady's boarding house and just talked to the like the lady who ran it and he was like, "Oh yeah, that lady's got some stuff up, but she's going to take off, so, you know, 
Whatever. Not our problem. That's that's <laughs> that's exactly what a good member of the LDS uh, church would probably mm-hmm. say. Yeah. She's not no, even a, uh, she's not even a member. Yeah, not even a member. No, I think it's like I don't know. I'm probably like super wishy washy and hypocritical about these things, but when it when it's like this, I don't care. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's 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 usually like things that are trying way too hard or they totally forgot that I usually get upset about mm-hmm. where it's just like, come on. Well, I'm not going to rake it over the coals too much because, you know, uh, Psycho yeah. is just as bad at that. And that movie yeah. costs a lot yep. more than this to make. And both are both blonde ladies driving out into the desert. Are they, though? Are they? That's quite a loud uh, container of water. Jesus. Well, is my mic turned up or something? These are normal things I do in here. How loud is it today? Well, well it's just... <laughs> See, you know what it is? I, I prefaced the episode. I threw up, and now I'm lightheaded, so now I'm doing things louder than normal. You're, hi- you're hydrating. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to drink water for once instead mm-hmm. of being a guy who takes a piss at the midway at the carnival like an animal. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, you know it's a carnival of piss soon. I, I do know that. We're, we should report on the elephant air activity there. Oh, man. Yeah, I, uh, I think I'll be going again. It's fun. There's a pretty good band going. Oh, cool. Uh, so uh, this movie also, when it yeah. was re- originally released, it uh, played as a double header with a film called The Devil's Messenger from 1961. Mm-hmm. And I thought for, since I wasn't going to watch the Carnival of Souls remake from 1998, because I couldn't Ooh. really find a copy and it yeah. just sounds like like the worst type of horror movie making. Uh, I was like, yeah. I'll, I'll check out this Devil's Messenger. It's on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. It stars Lon Chaney Jr. as, like, the devil's secretary. Uh, this thing, mm-hmm. all it is, RJ, is a couple bookends filmed with Lon Chaney uh, checking people in on his Rolodex at, on a, at a desk uh, into hell. And then he has a mm-hmm. woman called Satania that he sends Ooh. as a messenger to go do things on Earth. And what then happens is it cuts away to episodes of a, like, Swedish, like, television show that was essentially a Swedish Twilight Zone Hmm. and uh, yeah uh, there's not much more to say about it uh, other than it's got a couple of neat little short stories kind of tossed into it Uh, the one with this like the crazy photographer who's really obsessed about his art he takes a picture of this house and this woman comes out and he like proceeds to go after her she rejects him he he I guess like off camera strangles her to death and gets the fuck out of there but he starts developing his film on his camera and sees the house. He tries to burn the film, but one of the prints gets through. And then suddenly all this, all this attention gets foisted upon him. And, uh, he's like this photo that he took of the house before he committed this maybe murder. Who knows if mm-hmm. he actually did this or not. Uh, it starts becoming very prominent and everyone wants to look at this photo. And then whenever he looks at the photo, he sees the woman coming out of the house, mm-hmm. coming toward him in still photo in, in the still that only he's seeing. And then, he dies. <laughs> it's that. It's that kind of thing. But was it good? It's it's not necessary. Hey, so I I had never heard of this 1998 remake. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Wes Craven presents yeah. "Enter at Your Own Risk: yeah. Carnival of Souls." Uh, yeah. Have you read the description for this? Yeah. I don't think they watched the original movie. Either. Yeah. Alex Grant is a troubled young woman. Twenty years old. Years ago, she witnessed her mother get murdered by a carnival clown. Mm-hmm. She has nightmares of the clown. First, uh, nightmares of the clown Lewis. First, a kind man that turned bad and also tried to rape Alex's mother. <laughs> Alex fears for her life, worrying that Lewis might come after her and her younger sister. One day, Lewis returns after being released from prison for murdering Alex's mother and tries to kill Alex. Alex drives the car dries that must be a spelling mistake on letterbox alex dries the car that she and uh lewis are in into the river then she begins to have hallucinations she begins to lose her mind Mm -hmm. what is this movie it's not carnival of souls well only in name only in name yes i i just i was like i can't do i just can't i can't yeah there's well there's no point it's not even like not even remotely close to Mm -hmm. the Okay, well, whatever. So, yeah, Devil's Messengers I watched instead. But, you know, hey, folks, you should check out that Carnival of Souls. But be mm-hmm. warned, because apparently there's people who, like, don't like this movie at all. 
And, that, it, and it's like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe these, I, anyway, okay. So there's a con, kind of a context to why these people seem to like shit on this movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Slappy McGee, <laughs> uh, he gave this half a star. So uh-huh. I saw this at the movie theater at a Rift Treks live showing. The guys were hilarious with their various jokes and amusing lines. A good send-up of this film. They also make pretty funny asides about how terrible this film is. So I guess it's not entirely fair to judge this movie on a showing where people are already making fun of it. But still, this movie by itself is horrible. Terrible non-acting by all the side characters. Terrible attempted acting by all the real actors. The main actress is a joke of vacant stares and silences. Then screams. The plot is also crazy laughable makes no sense Mm. and the twist is so telegraphed that there is no actual twist just a terrible film that works great when it is heckled but otherwise um nope um i hate riff tracks yeah i was gonna that's kind of my my beef here yeah what uh, I can already tell that's going to be everyone's because if Rift Tracks did it, that's going to be everyone's opinion because they glob on to mm-hmm. any idea. But it's it's like what we talked about before when uh, I never really like got into Mystery Science Theater because it's just like, well, I like those movies that they're making fun of. Yeah. Even if they're doing it in a loving way, it's like I'd rather just watch those movies. Yeah, it's the weird like positioning of like the fact that – I don't know these film mm-hmm. these 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 schmarmy schmucks think that like yeah. the people making these films weren't in on their own joke. I guess like there's definitely films that like they're bad. <laughs> you can watch them, but like there's this whole idea like creating a culture around like watching people <laughs> do a riff tracks like do it, and you're watching mm-hmm. it as a show. It's kind of weird, but maybe it's also weird that people listen to podcasts where there's, we're kind of doing. Not the same thing, but we're, yeah. we're talking. We're, I guess we're a little. There's a bit more of a critical discourse, maybe that's occurring. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't. With butts. I don't always go. I don't like this because you know, at Rift Tracks made fun of it, and they. And that's it. yeah. That's the thing. But you know. I mean, people are fucking dumb. People are sheep. <laughs> yep, we they need sure to, are. We need to take our computers and throw them out the door and go back to a, a, a primal time when things were just better. When we, are you talking? About that Ted Wachinski guy again. Alex Lovendahl gave this film oh God. one star. Almost like a well-shot Twilight Zone, but the fun is spoiled by a rapey subplot, irritating music, <laughs> huh. and shallow characterization. Were this more invested in the danger of isolation, like Repulsion, Eraser It, and Pie Come to Mind, oh, or, the, or the dismissal of women's terror... I think this might work, but so as it is, it's gratingly repetitive. I I hate when people compare movies in clusters like that, like Repulsion, whatever else they said. I don't even remember anymore. It's dumb. It's dumb. It's only um, cool when I do it. Yeah. Okay. Nerds. And here's uh here's the mother. <clears throat> Gex. One star. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a, this was from Halloween of last year. Holy That's fuck, this was bad. I thought this was a classic. <laughs> Movies this shitty are supposed to be forgotten. It managed a couple so bad it's good moments, but otherwise it's just some, composed of some blonde staring into the nothingness of the plot with no substance except that of one large fat fucking red herring. God damn it, fucking fuck this fucking. Uh, and then they, he says some gimmicks. It's a struggle to get through this movie. I don't think I could have done it without the Rift Tracks live treatment. <laughs> oh, sh- come on. Uh, yeah, if it didn't get some laughs out of me that were independent of the riffs, this would have gotten half a star, a rating I have only given two films. This movie is really <laughs> fucking boring, and I think Rift Tracks was trying to convey that message to me on the Thursday premiere. On that day, I learned an important lesson about Fandango and Rift Tracks Live. It's not live. It's recorded via Dash or Dish Network. And then he starts talking about fucking Rift Tracks. Why? Because Rift Tracks is, is that... the worst, RJ. It's the fucking worst. Okay, I'm uh okay, you you buy time for a minute because yeah. I'm going to find what else this guy gave a half a star. Oh, I, I got it right here cuz I've got his uh, okay. Gex. So, Gex's favorite films are RJ. Yeah. The Dark Crystal. Okay, yeah, I, I... Aliens. Uh, if yeah, okay. RoboCop. 
Oh, come on. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm, those are like, I think it's. Are, are, See, are, are movies, you, sometimes RJ, movies. What, what yeah. you're trying to say is this, this person's a basic bitch. Yeah. I was going to say like those movies are generic enough. Like, yeah, I like those movies a lot too, but none of those are my favorite movies. Like mm-hmm. it's like when we keep finding guys who their favorite movies are when actually, you know what? You know what movie's been on all of these people who, like, uh, these people who write these horrible reviews and we go look at their favorite movies? I think Raiders of the Lost Ark has been on every one of them. Oh, I actually really shit. like that movie. It's an awesome the, movie. Yeah, but the last one, too, like, the guy had The Matrix, and uh, it's it's always, like, Raiders, The Matrix, one of the Lord of the Rings, and usually not Fellowship, which is the best one. And then, like, either something like Aliens or something like Jurassic Park. And it's just like, yeah, those are all good movies, but come on, man. There's, there's more than this. Yeah, it's like, for, for those to be your favorite, as you said, it, I guess, they're they're basic bitches. That's right. Uh, Slappy McGee's uh, favorite films, Leon from mm-hmm. the, man, the one and only Luke Besson, <sighs> Raising Arizona. Uh, which is uh, a okay. it's a Coen Brothers movie that I personally hold in low regard because it's a little okay. too slappy, it's a little too too sloppy McGee for me. Mm-hmm. Brazil and Fantastic Planet. Oh, okay. Well, I've never seen Fantastic Planet. We, we but... will one day. Is that in the Criterion? It is. For real? I didn't know that. Yeah, maybe are are you not thinking of Forbidden Planet? Are you? The sci-fi one. Are they both? Well, isn't Fantastic Planet like a sci-fi one too? It's an animated one, and then Forbidden Planet's the one of the like uh, what God's it? What's his goddamn name? Mm. Uh, Canadian man. Yeah. Uh, Naked Gun. I got you. That, Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen. Yep. Young Leslie Nielsen. How do you forget that? That guy's a national treasure. That's what the commercials in the theater tell me. Yeah. Hey, I just looked up something. This Gex guy. Yeah. He within the last week. He gave your beloved UHF a two and a half star. Well, you know, as discussed in previous episodes, comedy is subjective. But yeah. come on, folks. Carnival of Souls is good stuff. Yeah, Carnival it's of so, Souls is good. It's so evocative of a of weird, I guess just weirdness and off-puttingness and uh, emptiness of life and mm-hmm. like being a stranger in a strange place. Uh, and like I said, like, I don't know if you didn't mention this too much, but like I'll mention it again. The cinematography in this is really nice considering yep. it is like, like for all its amateurish qualities, like the kind of the editing, the acting at times, uh, like it's definitely the most amateurish movie I think that we've watched at this point. Like yep. just for like, it's not, polished mm-hmm. like a Bergman or a Kurosawa or any like even a uh, Alex Cox but yeah. um it like definitely is like this is a guy who made a movie with like 33,000 bucks and it works actually to its favor um and yeah I think this movie's great yep I agree dude I have uh I have two more notes that I forgot okay uh one was a quote that I thought was really fucking harsh after she plays that devil song yeah. and the priest kicks her out, he says, and quote, I feel sorry for you and your lack of soul. Yeah. And I thought that was such a harsh thing to say to someone. Even if they're not like religious, it's like, Jesus, man. I thought, you know. That's, actually, that's a little harsh. I think he, but actually he did. Like, Does he this, mean it in like a literal sense? Yeah. Well, it's like, I don't know, Baptists. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Or I guess maybe it's just playing on the, uh, he's a, the he's actual a, plot he's of this a, movie. He's a Baptist preacher in a mormon town yeah i guess it's because she was a wandering soul she was and, yeah and, and then my he last felt, he felt bad about it he sold that yeah. he, he's like oh man shit this is tough yeah yeah i know i just when i heard it i was like fuck mm-hmm. uh and then my last note was organs are tight yeah because that, those organs are wicked cool i like when she's playing it with all the foot pedals yeah and, the, like, and, and the way it's shot too like it's like yeah, it looks like, wicked. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess we could, like we didn't really talk about this movie as much as we sh- could have. I guess like yeah, just like all the stuff at the at the at the Ooh. carnival, her running around, yeah. exploring the space. That stuff's like fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and God, and yeah. just like that oh, final, yeah. the big, the final chase, them coming out of the water and stuff like that. The 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 makeup. Okay, uh, the other thing that gets brought up is uh, that the makeup was the inspiration for uh, George Romero problem solving. Night of the Living Dead and making his mm-hmm. zombies because they're very similar. Just white cake makeup and like dark eyeliner. You got yourself a ghoul. 
You got a ghoul, baby. Yeah. We know. We know ghouls. Yeah. So that's the that's the other thing. This movie's got a little piece in the uh, histories of cinema. I I sorry, agree. Slappy McGee and Gex. Gex watching movies with riff tracks. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I think if if we ever stop doing this show and people don't remember us anymore, I hope the one thing that lasts is that we've decided that Rift Tracks sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it sucks. Because, it, it, okay. because it's just guys making fun of movies that are actually, that they just don't like. And it's like, okay, whatever. So, is, so how would you differentiate it from Mr. Plinkett? Um, Mr. Pl- I, well, I've never watched a Rift Tracks, but does Rift Tracks go into like action no, it, as in depth critical analysis as Mr. Plinkett no, does? No, no, no. See, that's the thing. It's like with that, like someone might throw that out there, and my answer yeah. would be like, because no, like Mr. Plinkett actually is like sort of a film analysis. It's not just like yeah. a commentary track. He he puts a lot of work into that oh, yeah. shit. They're man. like they're so, like they're like those like those Star Wars ones. They're like pretty immaculately uh, edited. Mm-hmm. And I mean, those are movie, those are movies in their films in their, in themselves, you they know? Are. Yeah. They're, they're actually like, there's actual effort put into that rather than, uh, well, we put the effort into the script to be funny, to shit on this movie that people worked really hard on 50 years ago to get ourselves over. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think the same way, but yeah, I think if anyone ever made that comparison and be like, well, have you seen a, a blanket? Because those are wicked and there's a lot of work into those. Yeah, I mean, if to give someone credit, I guess like the one thing that you could probably uh, like the mystery science theater treatment of Manos, The Hands of Fate. I don't know if that movie would be much fun watching without them making fun of sure. it because that that movie definitely. I think the only people that talk about it is because of mystery science theater, so it's the thing where it's elevated it. But I mean, sure. fuck, like these guys are uh, they're tackling a, a sacred cow here in this Criterion horror movie. So mm-hmm. fuck these guys. Yeah, well, even even in that sense, like if it was a movie like that, that was like a a good bad movie, I would just rather watch it with my own friends than watch it than have someone else yeah. tell me the jokes. And I'm like almost positive that they, these guys probably actually really like the movie. Like I would I yeah. guess, but anyway, well, anyways, you heard it here first. It's a certified hit. We yeah, like yeah. it. Carnival Souls is good. This is the good mm-hmm. stretch, brother. The good, good stretch. Well, yeah. I've been waiting because you've been giving me nothing but shit lately. Well, wow. you blame uh, at the, the, the carnival the, of piss, the, the Criterion Booker. <laughs> yeah, at the, at the Criterion Carnival. Uh, mm-hmm. After the break, uh, ghouls will chase us down and drag us to our watery deaths because we died in that car crash, RJ. I'd rather die in the car crash than at the piss.